I tested three or four open source filaments and I ran into this problem here. The hatch box filament comes on a spool which is about a half a millimeter to at most one millimeter too wide to easily fit into the cartridge space here. And what I found out was that it wasn't actually a problem hitting the plastic here. There was a, this metal bar, retaining bar for the cartridge over here on the side uh, that was causing the problem. So I'm going to show you how I made a modification to fix this. Yes, the introduction to this video was from a 3D Walks 1, but the 3D Walks 2X experiences the same problem, so I thought I would reuse the video. This project is for the moderate to advanced tinkerer. I take no responsibility for any damage or warranty problems you cause with your unit. I solved this wide spool problem by making a modification to the inside with some spacers. So this video is how to take the unit apart, get in there and install those spacers. There are two screws at the top here that I just showed taking out. Carefully remove this top panel and set it aside. There are four more screws in the bottom panel. Remove these. Also remove the two screws from the top lip of the rear panel. Carefully rock the rear panel out and set it aside. Rotate the unit so you can get at the side. And gain access to and remove these two black screws in the handle hole on the side. There are some screws we need to go after inside on the front. Open the plexiglass door and remove the two screws holding the front sill plate on. Very carefully slide out the front sill plate as the door is hinged on this back here with a pin. You'll have to lift the unit so that the door comes out at the pins. Remove the two screws in the bottom right on the plastic tab and remove the screw above it holding the case onto the frame. There may be a small plastic spacer tab down here where the screws were taken out. Make sure that doesn't get lost. You should now be able to remove the side panel carefully. Again, the issue that I experience is with certain filaments such as Hatchbox, the spool is half to one millimeter too wide to fit behind this bar in this section. Enough tension is put on it that it just won't spin freely. My solution was to design and print some small spacers that go on the top and bottom of the metal bar behind the screws. I have included a link for the STL files for the spacers. They may be too wide for you. You can adjust them accordingly. Now just remove the screws at the top and bottom of the bar. Install the spacers. They really only go on one way as there are alignment pins. With the bar secured, we can see now that the hatchbox filament fits in without rubbing. Nice. Now since we've widened the gap, I'll mention at this time that when you put in Shindo cartridges, there will be some play in them, but they seem to lock in in the back and I haven't experienced any problems. If you feel there's too much play, simply reduce the thickness of my spacers before printing. Now to reinstall this side, bring the panel over. Inevitably, this handle will have fallen out by now and you will not know how it goes back in. So let's take a look at this. The easiest way for me to show you is to turn it around and just, you have to follow what I did here. Put this lip of this metal handle inside the hole. 
and then rock it down into place. It'll keep falling out, but just do it that way and hold it the best you can in place as you reinstall the side. You've got to get these little tabs lined up carefully in these gaps. Make sure it snaps into place and you get a nice flush fit here. And swing the side back into place. Notice the screw holes aren't lining up. Lift the panel a little and carefully drop it into place. Align the tab and reinsert this screw and then go after these at the bottom. Make sure to remember this spacer that fell out before, if you have one. It goes in this way with the holes at the top. It goes behind the tab in the front, in between the front tab and the white plastic. Then insert the two screws. If you haven't already done it, reinsert the two black screws inside the handle on the side. Okay, this side should be done as long as the side panel is flush and these screws line up. We should be good to go. Now, we can't install those yet. That goes on with the back panel, but let's spin this thing around and go after the other side. Now, this one proved to be much more difficult because there were some hidden screws holding it on and I had to figure out where they were. But we know we'll start with the handle, with the screws in the handle hole, just like we did on the other side. So remove those and remove these two screws on this black plastic tab on the bottom left. As on the other side, there's a black plastic spacer in here. Set it aside and don't lose it. It took me a while to figure out, but there's a tab on this side over here and it's inside the plastic. Much like this screw on the right, over here there's a screw, but it's inside this magnet and there's a little sticker or label over it. So you either have to just push into it or remove the little sticker and it's a Phillips screw right inside that magnet. And with that off, we should be able to pry this little tab out here and get the side off. Yep, there it comes. Then just lift it off carefully. Now we've gained access to the bar on this side and we can do our modification. And now the same process reinstalling this side, you got to rock this handle into place and try to hold it there while you reinstall the side. Hang the side panel over the top first, make sure this tab fits in between the plastic on the small gap here and slides under. Assure everything fits properly, the screw holes are lined up, everything's flush. Now the black plastic spacer on this side goes the other way. It goes with the holes down. Not like this. On the right side it goes that way. But this way the holes are on the bottom. And you stick it in here behind the black plastic tab and tighten the screws down. Reinstall the magnet. Make sure it goes through that tab on the side. And then reinstall the two black screws through the handle in the handle hole on the side. Now we need to reinstall the front sill plate with the name facing out. There's two screws, the two silver screws. This takes a little coordination. Grab the door with the pins on the right. I take the top pin, slide it in carefully, and then bring the bottom sill plate over. Gently lift the machine, put that in the hole. Slide the whole thing with the sill plate back in, and then reinsert the two screws. All right, we're almost done. Spin it back around, let's go after these back panels. OK, 
Okay, the back panel. There's this little ledge here, and there's this little tab in the bottom corner. We have to get both of those aligned in the little slots. So carefully align those, get this in here on this ledge, and just rock it into place until it lays flat. Now would be a great time to make sure you're not pinching any of the wires shown in the mechanism above in the chassis and the rear panel. Reinstall these two top screws. Grab the top cover plate. Align these four tabs into the slots. Again, making sure that you're not pinching any wires in here. Tilt it forward, lift it a little bit, make sure it's flush. Replace all the screws, two at the top, four at the bottom, on both back panels. And now that you've completed the modification, it should be much easier to insert these wider hatch box type spools on the right and on the left with less friction. When printing open materials, it's recommended to print these alignment brackets so that you can insert the filament right into the gap and have it pulled into the feed mechanism. Here I'd just like to point out that even though I'm running Hatchbox on the right, I wanted to run a Shindo chipped filament on the left, and it won't allow you to do this. I wish they would upgrade the firmware to allow this. So yes, I can pull the actual filament spool out of the Shindo cartridge and use it and just call it open material, but the problem with that is then the chip doesn't keep track of how much I've used off the Shindo roll, so it'll be incorrect from that point on. I wish they would allow us to use Shindo chipped filament in the cartridge along with open materials. And because you made it this far, I'll reward you with some money shots of the inside. This will help also if you've taken something apart and need to see how it was from the factory.